Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a steel tripod style stand for an anvil. So I just got a new anvil and today we're gonna be making a portable steel anvil stand for that anvil. Now, guys have been making anvil stands out of stumps, buckets of concrete, four by sixes, all kinds of stuff for ages. What we're doing here is making a steel stand that's reasonably light, reasonably portable, and that works pretty well. I'll talk about the justification for this particular style of anvil in a minute. As always, like and subscribe. Also, if you'd like my free PDF about how to get started in knife making, link in the cards and description. Now, today's project is fairly simple. If you have a welder, or if you have a friend who has a welder, or if you have a friend who is a welder. Otherwise, well, yeah. I'll be using various sizes of angle iron along with some two inch schedule 20 pipe. I use two inch pipe because I got a deal on it, but you can easily go down to an inch and a half and it'll work fine. The cost of materials was about a third of what it would cost to buy one from someplace like Centaur Forge, and I tailored it exactly to the size I want. If you've never made a stand before, there are different theories for anvil height, but I like mine to be situated so that it sits exactly at the height my hammer would naturally fall when I'm standing in a comfortable position. About 24 inches here, which puts the actual anvil face for this particular anvil at 34 inches. I'm about 5'10", so that's what works for me. I began by making a frame to fit the base of the anvil. I'll put plans for this on my Patreon site, but obviously the base size is governed by the base of your anvil. Speaking of Patreon, if you want to access years worth of knife build plans and other cool stuff, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Link in the cards and description. Anyway, back to the frame. In this case, I'm using inch and a quarter angle iron. I'll measure the base and then cut the four pieces to fit. I'm using a band saw here, but you could do it with a hacksaw, an abrasive chop saw, whatever. I want a little extra room because the interior surfaces of angle iron are not dead square, so you don't want to get too cute here and end up without enough room for the anvil to seat squarely. Let's talk about the justification for this stand as I get the angles cut and then weld everything up. I'll be teaching small classes at my new shop, so I need a few new anvils. Now, unlike my old anvil, which has never moved, I want these to be portable so I can move them around my shop. So the most important virtue of this stand will be portability. If I just wanted a rock solid stand to sit in the same place all the time, eh, I probably wouldn't do it this way. But if you wanna go out to give demonstrations or you wanna move your anvil from your shop to your driveway, you have a very small shop and you need to move things around all the time, this is a great option. As with a great many things in the metalworking world, three quarters of the work is in setting up and fixturing everything and the welding itself only takes a few minutes. I'm just using a flux core MIG welder with no argon or anything so the welds are super ugly, but they'll hold up perfectly well for this build. Okay, so now we do a bozo check to make sure that everything actually fits. It's all perfect. And moving on to the legs. I'm cutting mine on my bandsaw at 20 degrees so that they'll splay out a little bit. Now look, there's no magic angle here. Basically, the more you splay them out, the more stable the anvil is, the less likely it is that you'll knock it over by accident. And, you know, that's a legitimate safety concern as well as something that'll potentially smash your anvil or whatever. But the problem is that the more you splay them out, the more likely you are to trip over the legs, so that's also a safety issue, and you just have to make a judgment call. I find 20 degrees is a little tippy, but it's pretty compact. So if you want more stability, go more like 25 degrees. Just be aware it's easier to trip over it. Again, I had to put together this Rube Goldberg setup to hold everything in place. I'm not a real welder, so I don't have a welding table or a bunch of nice fixturing gear, but eventually I got it all squared away. It's just a matter of fussing around with whatever you've got available in your shop until you get something that works.
Once the legs are all welded up, I cut some small angle iron to make little braces. Once I cut the pieces, I'll use my grinder to grind a radius so the ends will fit neatly, or neatly-ish anyway, to the legs, close enough for welding. It's not like this thing was going to fall apart without them, but it's a lot sturdier this way. More clamping, more welding, and we're done with the hard part. Now we'll set her up and see how she fares. Just because, I'll go ahead and paint it. There's really no reason for doing this other than the fact that I'm putting it on YouTube. I'm a big believer in doing the absolute minimum amount of work necessary to produce effective shop tools. The point of tools is not to look pretty, it's to work well. But no one will bust into your shop and stab you in the eye just because you occasionally throw away an unrecoverable hour of your life making something look better. A little silicone on the bed and the legs makes everything seat a little happier and decreases the ring of the anvil. I'll also throw a chain around it to decrease the ring a little bit. And that's it. The triangular base will sit on any surface no matter how uneven. Now, if you're going to be putting it on dirt, you'll want to weld some flat plates or some kind of little feet on the bottom so that it doesn't sink down into the dirt. But for me, using this completely on a concrete floor, it's perfect as is. So, the main thing, this stand is totally solid. It doesn't rock or flex or do anything to eat the energy of your hammer. That's the single most important thing about any anvil stand. It's got to efficiently contain the energy of your hammer. And this does that in spades. Like I said, it's a little bit tippy, nothing that would be a problem in normal use, but something to be aware of. Uh, and also, as I'm using it right now, it kind of slides around a little bit, so I'm going to need to kind of shim it or put a little more silicone on the feet or something, but uh, it's, it's very stable. It just, it'll skate a little bit if you start hammering, you know, sideways on it. As for portability, it's fantastic. You just grab the anvil and the stand will go wherever you want with minimal effort. It's very light, just what we needed. All right, so now back to the real work, making knives. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com